Hey there fellow Grease Monkeys and welcome to a video and another free Toon Shader asset. I just updated my Toon Shader that I made uh, a few months ago, maybe even longer, uh, to be more uh, streamlined, simple, versatile, more options. I'm very excited to show you guys. So here's the Toon Shader and if you want to download this shader, it's in the description below. It goes to my Gumroad and if you want it for free, because it is a free asset, you can use it for uh commercial use uh obviously free use royalty free you don't have to credit me but uh if you can tag me on instagram i'd love to see what you make when you go to the gumroad link all you have to do is make sure under the price it's the suggestion will be five dollars so if you have some money to spare and you like you know the product you know please drop in uh some cash for me and i'll be eternally grateful but all you have to do is put zero put i want this you purchase it, download it, and then you'll be here with this project file. All right. Once you get the project file, you open it up and you'll see the shader applied to three different objects. So you can see the effects that it has on it. And you'll also have the shader graph open so I can show you through the settings. If you ever wanted to append this into a separate project file, all you have to go do is go to file, append, uh, find where the toon shader is located. So mine is in a uh, materials folder here. Uh, and then you here's GM toon shader V2. Click on that, click materials and click the toon shader. So there it is. You hit append and it should put it into your file. Uh, I already have it here, obviously. So I don't need to append it. So before we get started on me showing you how this tune shader works, uh, make sure that you have this setting change for your color. So go to your render properties here, this little tab up here, uh, and go to color management and under view transform, make sure that this is on standard when it, uh, I think blender's default is to default onto filmic. So standard filmic, you can see how it's more grayed out, you know, it has its various uses for, you know, realistic rendering, but since we're doing more cartoony tune stuff, you put it on standard and you get like these nice vibrant colors. So I definitely suggest putting that setting on first uh, and even messing with the looks here. We're just going to leave it on medium contrast. All right. So now you got the shader, you're in the project file. You set the color management setting. Now we can start going through some settings, right? So you can see here in the tune shader, we have, uh, we'll start off on this orb. We have the four different colors, right? And this is what it uh, correlates to the top here. These four different colors on the tune settings. So um, I try to be as descriptive as possible. So the highlight, so it'll be this white, it'll be the brightest spot on your uh, shader and also forgot to mention this is uh being affected by light so right now a sun is currently on you'll see it right here the sun a light uh and you can see that it's at strength one at white and if i even get this and rotate it you can see it is affected by lights so uh the brightest spot is going to be white uh, and you can see that you could choose these different colors, but you're looking at these colors and you're like, hey, this is more of a purple color and these colors are blue. What's happening here? So right now I have something on. Let me skip ahead and turn it off. Uh, and we're going to turn it off here. And there we go. Now we got our colors, right? So we got, uh, we also have a little bit of an outline on there. So let's fade that away. So this is what it would look like with everything turned off. Here's your four colors, right? So you can see that I could change the colors. See, it turns into whatever color I want. Boom, yellow. So maybe we can even start changing it right now. Let's do like, uh, let's keep it white actually. Uh, we'll do this one first, you know, like a, like a pink color. Then we can go to the second color, which is the second band here. Uh, and we'll go into like more of a red color. And then for this third color, it's the last color there. And we'll make it super red there. So you can see this is how it's affecting the colors. White, pink, darker pink, and red. You can see they're correlated here. So these next settings right here, uh, what they do is they change the position of where uh, the highlight and the colors are, right? Before you ever mess with these three settings here, Make sure that uh, uh, I would first mess with the, the lights first, right? So let's turn on a point light, point light. And you can see this light, if you get move the light closer, oop, it's still on point light. Let's, I mean, it's still on sun, so let's put it on point light here. Uh, and let's bring it closer in. 
and just so you can see the positioning, I'm going to open up another screen here. You can see the the point lights in front. It's not bright. You see how it has to get really close and then it's, it starts to show. We'll make this a little stronger. Let's make it a uh, hundred. Uh, maybe make it 50. Okay. So you can see this light is what's affecting where the uh the the highlights and the different colors are appearing and it's the the light is affecting it right so before you mess with any of these settings make sure that you're messing with the lights first because you can change the power you can see i can change the color there uh you can change the radius and you can see you can make it much softer right uh and you can obviously change the diffuse specular so definitely affect the lights first before you start messing with those settings. But let's say you are you you have affected it uh, and you do want some more control over how much of these colors are showing up. So what these three settings do right here, highlight position, it just uh, expands the color right of where it goes. So here's the highlight. If we move it, I'm going to hold shift here. Let me make sure I have my screencast keys for you to see what, what I'm doing here. I'm holding shift and then clicking and then see I can expand the highlight to go further and take up more of the object. It doesn't go all the way, but you can make the highlight bigger, smaller. You can also change the, the, the second color's position. You can see it's messing right there. And then the, the last color, and you can see that it's being affected there. Right. So this is just get to give you a fine tuning of the color position. But once again, I will leave these all the same mess with the lights first. And if you're not getting the necessary uh, effect that you want or the, the what you're trying to achieve, then affect these three colors here. Um, so this gives you an immense amount of control. Right. So we have our colors change. We can change our positioning for our lights. So this next toggle is an emissions toggle. Let's say you wanted this to glow for some reason. So um, if you put this toggle on, right, you'll turn it on to one. Nothing's happening. Uh, put on the emission strength higher and you can see that it can start glowing. But obviously it's not glowing because in Eevee, you have to go into your render tab and hit bloom. And you can see it glows now, right? So, you know, you can make it really bright, <laughs> something ridiculous. And this, I just added this option in case you wanted something to glow, right? Because what if you wanted just that highlight the glow, right? So you can mm, change these colors here, maybe make them black for some reason, <laughs> if you wanted to do this, just showing you the options. And then you can put the emissions and you can make, you know, a little piece of it glow uh, if you wanted to do that. So, uh, the emission toggle is basically to turn on the, the, you know, if it radiates light. So I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to leave that at one. Um, okay. And then the next thing I have here is the highlight gradient and highlight shadow, right? And what this is, is that it's going to add a gradient color on top of these four colors. Uh, and it's gonna, when I say highlight, it means that the gradient starts here. So that it starts blue. It starts from the highlight and then it gradually goes back to the shadow area with the second color. Right now you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my colors. Let me reset my colors here. I like to for you to see with the original color here. Let me go back. All right. So we're back to our original color, how we open it, just the way that you opened it. Uh, all right, so we have the highlight gradient, shadow gradient, uh, and we have the colors here. So if I just move this up, and SH stands for shadow and highlight, uh, probably could have did it in reverse, but gradient intensity. So if we if we put it up, make sure to hold shift, make sure to hold shift, and then you bring it up, you see, and then you can see this gradient happening, right? And the gradient's happening from here, the highlight, that's the blue, and then go into the shadow, this area, and that's the pink. And it's mixing with the colors that are on top, right? So you can give it a nice little cast, right? It, I love the, that gradient look, and I think it adds more to the tune shader. And you can see I'll change the colors here. If I put it to red, and maybe put this one to green, you can see the green is going into the shadow, mixing with the shadow. And then the red is mixing in with the highlight here. If we put the intensity up, you can see it's really intense there. But if we bring it down, you can see it starts getting lighter. So this gives you a gradient from highlight 
to shadow highlight to shadow all right so we'll, we'll take that back all right and then the bottom gradient and top gradient is a gradient from the uh how it explains the bottom of the object to the top of the object right so let's put in the tp <laughs> gradient intensity and when we bring it up you can see it come in right and right now it's on blue uh and that's the bottom and then the top gradient and that's the pink up here right so let's change this to the top to green you can see that the top is green and let's change the bottom to red and you can see the bottom is red and you can see the gradient filling in here so this is just another gradient that you can on top add on top of this gradient so let's start mixing them together let me put these the same color oops and all I'm doing is putting my mouse over it. Control C, Control V. Okay, so let's add in some of this pink gradient. And then we'll add in some of, if it's very little too. And then we'll add in some of this top bottom gradient. Except let's add, make it in different colors. Let's make them like a, a dark blue for the bottom. And maybe a red for the top. See, now we have this gradient from the top to the bottom and a gradient from left to right or from highlight to shadow, I should I should say. So see, we'll bring it in. We can even make it stronger. And we can even make the the one to the side even stronger. See, and there now we got gradients going everywhere. And I think it adds a lot to uh, this um, this shader. So let's revert this back. I just wanted to demonstrate. OK, so now we have the next thing, which is the Fresnel color and the Fresnel, uh, let's put the uh, intensity down and you can see this edge here, right? Doesn't have a Fresnel right now. Let me make it very visible. But if I put the intensity up, you can see it comes in, right? And maybe it's not visible right now. It's supposed to be a subtle effect, but let's put these to black. And you can see the Fresnel is now there and you can fade it in and out as you want it, right? The reason I have two Fresnel colors is because I you can also put a gradient on the Fresnel, right? So let's say we put a gradient on it. Let's put it to red and green just for the to show you the the um just so, to show you the extreme so you can see it. So you can see it's red to green, it goes left to right. So I also have a Fresnel rotation here, and you can rotate the Fresnel, right? So let's put colors that make more sense, right? Let's put in like a blue and a pink, right? And now let's fade it a bit. And now let's rotate it. There we go. And now we have a Fresnel that has some control. You have some different colors and it's a good stylized look. So cool. So we got all the colors we can mess with the colors uh positioning we can mess with the lights we can mess with the emissions and how strong it is make sure to put bloom you can mess with the gradient that goes from the highlight to the shadow and the gradient that goes from the bottom to the top and then we have the intensities for both you saw the fresnel and obviously you can change the fresnel how deep it goes into the object by using the ior which is right here and i'm fading it but let's put it intense right so see it goes in but if you it, the 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 Fresnel takes over, but if you put it right to the edge, very subtle, right there, and then you put the intensity down, see you can get a nice little a nice effect here, kind of like a like it's like it's highlighting it. So that those are all the settings for the tune shader that you can mess around with. I left the principal shader out here because you can also affect the material uh, with this shader so you could definitely mess with all these settings i haven't touched them but let's say you want it metallic if you put this all the way metallic it's gonna load right here you can see that it has a more metallic look you can take it off here back to normal you can put the specular bigger you could take away the specular so it has no specular you can change the roughness i would change leave that the same but just know that you can mess with any of these settings as well okay and then the last thing that i have on here uh is specifically for a texture so let's say these lines are a little too harsh for you you can actually go here and just change the detail 
and you can see that it kind of gives you uh, a grain look across and it, and it fades between the lines. Obviously, this is a very extreme, but what if you just wanted a little bit of it? You hold shift, just adding a little bit. There you go. And then these lines kind of fade and it has like a dithering effect. Uh, kind of dithering, not really, but for the most part, it has a, a transitional effect to with uh, your different colors there. So maybe you don't want them as harsh, like you want them harsh, but not too harsh. You'll just mess with the detail here. And there you go. Boom, and you have more of a fun, stylized look. So those are all the settings for the tune shader. Um, definitely play around with this. Once again, it's the description. Uh, you'll find the download link in the description. It's on my Gumroad. Free to use, commercial, royalty free. Uh, credits not mandatory, but I would definitely appreciate to see what you guys are doing with the shader. Uh, I went through all the shaders here or all the settings uh, and make sure that if you want it for free and you don't want to pay for it, just put a zero on the price and say, I want this. But if you can leave me a couple bucks, very appreciated. I hope this video helped you out. Uh, I hope you enjoy your free tune shader and have a wonderful day. Thank you.